definitely should have filled up the gas before we left. Already on E and only 20 minutes into the trip. sure we're doing our eight cups a day vibe of which I feel like just it makes me feel a lot more awake here so all right back on the road let's go and we've made it two hours from Chicago not too bad we're gonna pull up an owner spot here <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Hello. How are you doing, man? Good, how are you? Good. Find the place all right? Yeah, it's actually <laughs> not that remote. I thought it was right? a further away. No, yeah, it's like right off the interstate. Hey, Steven's office is back here. No. Whoa, it's goddamn <laughs> drug bus. What's up? Everybody down. What's going on? Welcome. Welcome oh, yeah. to Campus Inc. Uh, not bad. Yeah. Wow. This is a nice executive office. Must be nice. We got a view of uh, the highway and uh, another building. <laughs> What's up? This looks great. Working on some process stuff. Oh. Of course. What I mean, it's what I'm always working on. You know, uh, it's the cellulose. Matt. Exactly. <laughs> hey. Nice to meet you, Matt. Nice Matt to meet you. Built, uh, <laughs> like two thousand online stores <clears throat> last year. Damn. And uh, Matt makes sure everything's ordered perfectly on time. Uh, basically, everything's ordered for the company, counted in, checked, everything shipped out. Matt used to work at FedEx, so we stole him. So logistics master. Logistics master. Yeah. So is this where customers come in too to pick customers up? Customers come in. So this is just like our local showroom from the community. Wait, this is the one that I really like, actually. The uh, where are the other ones? I thought you printed uh, these. These are all, really cool. Right the lab. So that. what was the thought process behind this one? We just put price points and then um, what colors they came in, what shirt it was. Very cool. So they could feel it and then yeah. see a little more. Yeah, that's for our, that's for our on-campus site. But basically, we obviously can't have everything in here, so we just have a little bit of it. And then our favorite prints that we've recently done would just be like right here. You know, if there's something that was cool that we did recently. So is this the issue of customers when they are walking in for a new order or current cut like a... No, these, like whenever up? we get a cool print, we put it on this rack so that if they're talking to customers, they this can show them. This is a new one too. What is this? That's a corded crew. Oh, okay. Um, or like we just went to Canada, so that was like a cool shirt that we made right there. That's awesome. That's awesome. Signs and banners, what made you get into that? There was just enough customers that were asking for it. Um, and we were constantly like subbing it out, so we wanted to just have one here. If we ever have to do printable heat transfer, that's what we're using right here as well. I mean, we use the crap out of it for the most random things, last second orders, um, things like that. But that's two years old. This is the world's best cutting table that my business partner Jed built. Uh, Wait, this one? No, this whole table right here. Oh my here. gosh. Yeah. I always forget how talented Jed is. Yeah, so like, Literally, he like built. Man, this is incredible. He welded the whole thing together, and when we're cutting a ton. Oh of wow! And he rounded the corners and everything. Yeah. So like, this just fits right on it. I mean, when we're doing like tons of coroplast signs, like this thing's a workhorse. So it's awesome. What's this? Oh, that was uh, Dalton. My production manager was writing out his workflow for his team. Oh okay. So he did it on chalk paper, and then I threw it in Draw.io, but I accidentally crinkled it yesterday. But. Uh, that's awesome. So he worked together with them to figure out. Yeah, he just it. like worked on it himself and then gave it to me. We tweaked it a little bit and then I'm putting it into our big one and then we're going to be printing out our big one. It's almost ready. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, this, I think it's first purpose was to be a conference room and maybe we'll make it that eventually. Right now, our marketing intern, Jordy, hangs out there. Um, but eventually I'd like to put like a conference room in here. This thing's the best thing in the world. Oh, the uh, to take really nice. Dude, they're awesome. Like, and what, what are the camera goes in top or something? Top or, yeah, you get both angles. It's, this thing is literally like, I think it's 50 bucks and like it just takes the best pictures. For social media? And yeah, just like stuff? promo products, anything we get in that's small, we throw in there and we take So you just picture. bought it on Amazon? And yeah. 
accidentally bought two. I think Josh King stole my other one. And this is, that barely takes up any space, yeah, too. that's awesome. This is the MTV Cribs part. This is where <laughs> the magic happens. Cue the music. Yeah. It's way bigger than last time. For the record, Steve used to be in a second floor, like a hundred year old building? Yeah. 120 year old building? Yeah. Second floor, no elevator. How did you load the shirts? Basically like with a forklift through the back of the building or up the stairs. It was terrible. Right. So, uh, yeah, it was not fun. A lot easier here. This is awesome. You just bought this one? This last year. How's split, it helped? Why did you decide on this one? A split belt. Basically, we can run them on different speeds. So if we're doing polyester on one side, cotton on the other, uh, the belts can be running, you know, uh, faster or slower so that we can, we don't have to like dedicate the oven to one side or the other. Gotcha. So that's pretty important when we're curing. Uh, yeah, we basically got as wide as they made at m and and it's beautiful. We love it. It's got like built-in recipes and stuff too. It's really good at uh, removing the heat too. Like, do you have AC yeah. running or? We have AC running right oh, now. Okay, okay. So this building was actually used to build semiconductors uh -huh. and like microchips. So there is 220 power all through our ceiling right here. And we have 400 amp breakers. So literally every 15 feet, there's power drops. One of the best parts about this building was the, the whole ceiling was wired already. So we literally just had to do very simple drops for our 220s. Since it was made for like, seemed like lab semiconductors, whatever they were doing, the ceilings were low, but they AC'd it. Kirby, hey, let's go, man. Nice to meet you. Kirby just started with us three months, a couple months ago? Yeah. Um, and this is the old press from upstairs. This is the Lawson Trooper, and we had it on the second floor. And the reason we had it up there is because it was too, you had to have a lighter auto because it was such an old place. And then when we moved, we brought it down. Uh, the reason we still like it is we can do white flash white on one screen uh, because it does have that shuttle flash. So, you know, eventually when we get another, you know, auto, uh, it'll replace it, but it's just a nice, it's almost kind of replaced our manual printing a little bit when we need to do white flash white and we don't want to have to burn two screens um, on a small order like this. So we actually, when we rebuilt it, we didn't install all the heads. We basically just put like four heads on it, both flashes, and that's it. So we keep it simple. What was the thought process? Oh my gosh, that's clever with the what? spray tag. With the magnet. Bob Armour magnet, yeah. yeah. press. I mean it's easily got maybe from 2006 or something like that so basically we just built exactly what we needed out of it and then uh, we still love it uh, sometimes it's got its own personality but yeah <laughs> that's it. Do you remember Tom? Yeah of course. Tom. Hello Tom. How are you man? Good to see you. It's been a long time. Yeah I know it has been a while. Bruce Please. just got married last week but he decided to come here on his honeymoon instead of uh, Great uh, man. Wanted to hang out, print some koozies with you. Uh, come oh, on, man. there's a hundred right here. I'm looking for somebody to print these son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Another hey. question it. Luke How says doing? hi, by the way. Is that? Luke, Luke says hi. Oh, hey, what's up? What's up? Uh, How we doing? I'm calling, by the way. Good, good. First. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I like your software. Thank you. Thank you. This is the newer Sportsman. It's a year old exactly. I guess what made you guys decide on this one versus another MR or anything? Uh, you know, we don't print high, you know, like high color jobs. I'd say like our average job is no more than four or five colors. Uh. <laughs> God damn it. Is this where my pants have to go through the dryer? No, we need to shoot it out. Software. We don't print more than four or five colors maximum on a side. Now that we've gotten this, we've started doing you know six or seven occasionally. You know these guys have these 16 head challengers. We're not a contract shop. M and R is obviously an hour and a half away, so you know they're down here all the time if we need anything. Was um, it easy to learn how to use it, or much you... easier use it learning how to use this? You can ask Dalton about that. Dalton worked on that machine for a while, uh, and he said this thing is like butter compared to that. Um, I noticed he has an iPad put on with that. This is the mob armor. What does he put on the iPad there? Uh, Printavo. Oh, okay. Like the mock-up or? Yeah, he'll pull up his proofs and, and everything he needs. You know, if we were crammed in here, we could fit four autos. Yeah. But basically, we would just replicate this on the other side of those the cages over there. 
How so, many square feet is this building? Uh, like 13,000. So, um, and you guys bought it. We bought it, yep. We own it, and then we own all the land behind us as well. So what was the decision between that or releasing? Uh, you pay your own rent. I mean, you're making money on your investment. Um, we got it for a really good deal. And, you know, that rent payment we're paying to ourselves, that's just building equity um, for me as, you know, an individual. Like, yeah. if I go to sell it one day, I can sell my land, and that's worth something. And the business is paying the rent, so really it's, it's almost like a kind of free investment, but uh, no more different than buying a house. I mean, did you install a lot of the walls or what? Everything was in here, literally it was a blank slate, lights in the ceiling, power in the ceiling, color on the walls. We didn't even change the color on the walls. Okay. So that was literally just like, it was like a skating rink in here. That was a little room, and so we turned it into like our ink kitchen. Um, so basically, all of our specialty inks uh, that we keep are in here. Um, guys get the ink that they need, you know, they take it out there. So um, you, you, it looks like you do set colors, you know, are you not mixing anything or is it just No, I mean, we will custom mix if it's, if it's requested and it's a bigger order, we'll absolutely, you know, Pantone match. But for the most part, we've got enough colors that our customers can pick from. We've renamed all of our colors, so I know we buy from, you know, Rutland and Nasdar and Wilflex, and they've got all their own names. But we just named it ourselves so that we have our own code when we talk to each other. Then everything is on our own color card, right here. Um, and that color card is over there as well. So that just everyone knows these are the colors that we have. We give every one of these to our students as well. So everyone speaks the same language. We put the Pantone on there if people want to get technical, but that's the vernacular that we use. Do you remember this thing? It was up there? Yeah. Just with like our top 10 colors that we're always using. You know, the guys can just like easily pull from there. I don't know, it's pretty handy. We built this little thing for the spatulas. Do your sales reps, do they sell based on, so if somebody's like, I want blue, they just pull out the card and they're like. They say I want Royal, one? Marine, Metro, Baby Blue, Columbia Blue, Super Bright Blue, Got it. you know. Um, and that's what they have to use or we reject the order. So it's like, make sure you put the right color in. So just reducing the options. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but like, there's enough colors on there to make the world go round. Like, right. There's no reason you can't pick from those colors. Right. You know, and we're not doing, you know, like for the majority of our orders, customers aren't that picky. Obviously when we get big clients that are national accounts that have very specific inks, we'll just either order it in or just we'll hand mix it ourselves. So this thing's awesome. This is an Asus Chromebook and uh, Oh, wow. Yeah. So you set it up here and then I Oh, very cool. So you like a monitor stand coming off the yeah. back. So, you know, all the guys can pull everything here. This is on a universal account, like a production account. Um, but if they're looking at inks or something like that, they can swing it around that way. I don't know. It's just versatile to have and it gets used, even though everyone has an iPad, it gets used pretty heavily. So this thing was just bought on Amazon. I think this whole thing was probably $400 because these things, these Chromebooks are so cheap. And that's literally, it's just a Chrome browser. It's all it. So. Very cool. So they're pulling this up to see a little more detail the job that's easier to use on an iPad? Yeah, I mean, if they're really pulling something up that's got, you know, like, um, you know, like, that they don't want to take their iPad on, they can just pull it up here. Basically, this is for them to get their inks and stuff like that. Whoever is mixing inks and getting ink ready, this is the computer that they're using. Got it. Usually we leave a pallet here. And uh, they just open this and put everything on it. Uh, it makes it easier for you to bring it over there. Yeah. We put this garage in. There was just double doors, but we couldn't get the equipment through. So my business partner just plasma cut a garage door in. UPS loves it. They literally pull up every morning. Usually we'll leave a skid for them and then they'll load everything for it, open the garage, yell at us, and then we'll pull it in. So, be nice to your UPS drivers. <laughs> They're great people. Next step is um, picking and pulling. And so that'll all happen over here. And Matt would do that. We purposely put everything on wheels here. So like we can move boxes really, really quickly. This is where packing and pulling happens. Basically orders have to be packed and pulled immediately to check in case there's shortages or anything like that. Matt's gonna be doing that here in a little bit. He'll probably do it in, I don't know, an hour or so, 30 minutes. But he counts everything to make sure 
it's in, and then schedules it over here. If something's missing, it stays over on the left-hand side until it's pulled, but nothing makes it over to scheduling until it's perfect. Basically, we've got five racks for five days of the week. We use the top rack if we are scheduling for next week. So say we're really backed up, we'll start using that just to put stuff up there. So my business partner, Jed, welded us up like 10 of these tables. And so basically the guys can put things on carts and take them straight to press. So if it's a big order, obviously it just goes right on a cart and it just gets slotted in here like a lane. Um, but if it's a small order, 20 or 30 pieces, it'll just get put up on a rack. Every order, this is how we're paperless. So that's the only thing that goes on the shirt. And then Dalton, my production manager, gets these cards ready, exactly how he wants them to print. And then so he- So these are stuck under here? What is this? This is a receipt holder. And this is for each job? Yeah. So you print this out, you print a bunch of blanks, and then you'll... Yeah, so you'll see Matt doing it here in a little bit. So once the USP, UPS <laughs> shipments come in for the day, I come back here, um, I lay out the box and start checking in all the orders. Um, these orders could be in the next week, the next couple of weeks, but we want a product here as uh, quick as possible because if you don't want the shirts, you can't print them. So I come back here, I check in all the orders, make sure the sizes are right, and nothing goes over there until I have every single shirt. So like for example, we're waiting on a couple sizes for these because who knows how far ahead of schedule these guys can get. And if it's due Friday, but they have something to run, like they'll go and run it. So Got I don't it. want them to pull an order that's not full and you know. So if anything's missing, you keep it aside and, yeah. and wait. I keep it over here and I kind of check it each day, see when it's going to get delivered. Right. Um, I'm pretty sure these two shirts came in today. So once I check it in, make sure all the sizes are right, I'll put it over here on the corresponding shelf, uh, like what day it's supposed to be printed and everything like that. So if I'm not back here, the printers just know exactly what goes on which day. They look at Printavo, we can correlate that. So how do you there. coordinate what day you should drop it on? So let's say all the garments are in now, you've yeah. waited and everything, you're so, ready to drop it into the rack. So we like to say a day ahead of schedule. So say something's due on Thursday or Friday. So I might, instead of just put it on the Friday shelf, um, I want to try to put it on Thursday so they can like stay ahead of the schedule and everything. Cause mm -hmm. We don't like to be printing on the day things are due. I mean, it happens sometimes, but I try to do it a day in advance. And I know if I notice they didn't get to it, I'll put it on the next shelf on that corresponding day. So I kind of come back here throughout the day just to see like what they're doing and everything like that. So uh, yeah. Got it. That's awesome. We try to keep the bigger orders, as you can tell in these rolling tables, because it's easy for these guys just to grab it, roll it straight there instead of carrying four different stacks of that and everything like that. And we don't put shirts back in boxes and then unbox them to print because we're turning shirts in like four to five days. It's kind of redundant to like, unless an order is gonna be sitting on our shelf for a long time, then we might put it back into a box. These are all the orders say I ordered in the last couple of weeks or last week or yesterday that I'm waiting for the shirts to come in. So they all, um, we have these nice sheets saying like when it's gonna be due hard due date, they need it by 2 p.m. on Monday. If it's gonna get, we're gonna deliver this right to them. Uh, it's been ordered and once all the shirts are in, I mark it checked in and then I bring it to Dalton, who's running our production. So he knows everything he has up there, he knows the shirts are back here too. So just kind of double checking stuff. I don't keep it out of this um, until everything's checked in and then it goes to production, so. This just means like these shirts should be somewhere in here most likely. So I know what orders to look for. And I try to put in the invoice number, it's from SNS. That's the invoice number, so I know exactly where to go to look for it. Once I pull the shirts out, um, I find the corresponding um, sheet I have, do the barcode scan, QR scan. And then I go over here, and this is an order that was already kind of already here, but we're waiting on the rest of it to come in. We have a nifty little thing where I mark out the sizes once we get it in, so I know what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for these women's shirts. So then I would just count them in real quick. Here's a women's extra large, which we need one. So I kind of put up the rest, and then I come back over and mark it like that. So then I need, I know I need seven large. The large are right here. So I just count each one. Or these are medium, sorry, but five medium. One, two, three, four, five. So that's good over here and I make this mark we got five medium look at how he checks in I saw that we need a uh, seven large so it's nifty 
Especially as we were redoing that part. Isn't it pretty good packed up? It's it's cool. We got seven large. So that's that. And then we need one small. So this is this its order. Then do that. I'll mark it as this. And then he hits a task button. Yeah, we have task up here. That click. See, I print out the job cover sheet. I ordered it. I had or checked in the items. And then the last thing is I print out a box label. Print it. Mark it. Checked in. Take this. Put it on the shirt so the printers know what it goes to. And then it's due on August 14th, which is next Wednesday, I believe. So then I'll take it to the Wednesday rack. There. And then later on in the day, I bring the invoice up to Dalton, or the sheet to Dalton, so he knows he'll go through and he knows what shirts where. He'll bring it back. And I put that, the sheet, right here on Wednesday. So the guys can all match up and see like what's going on for the day. Smart. What what's this all about? The uh Printable status is on the floor. So I'm pretty sure it's on the back side. Embroidery drop off. What's this gonna say? Embroidery pickup. We do our embroidery uh in a in a out at my business partner's uh, shed. So uh he picks it up in the morning. Oh, so this is where they know exactly. Yeah, like we put it there if it's going out and he drops it right there when it's Smart. coming back. So we don't, uh, yeah, we just don't want to make mistakes. So Matt, as he'll throw all his stuff here for shipping for the day, mm -hmm. basically this will just like get piled up with stuff. Need to and ship. then ready to ship, UPS comes in at 2 p.m. They pull at 4 p.m. They pull everything on this side of the thing. So as production manager now, what do you feel like is a, is your newest challenge to be able to? Uh, being at two places at once. You, yeah. know, uh, you want to be everywhere. I want to prove my stripes in every area. Uh, it's not really, uh, I wouldn't say difficult, but it's very stimulating. It makes the job fun, but I uh, wouldn't consider it a difficulty, but you know, you can spread yourself thin if you you know, don't take time for yourself. So. Any interesting tips that you feel like you learned over the past couple months you wish you were doing like a year ago? Team things, I guess, that really seem to make differences. You know, we always try to do a better print, you know, every day, but I think, you know, over the last couple months, we've really learned that, you know, it's gotta be a team. If we're not a team, then we're not going to function well. We're not going to do good numbers. So it's kind of what I've been realizing more and more every day. I noticed you were building that workflow chart also. Uh, working through that, is that something you share with the team so everybody's on the same page? Or what's that for? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's final form. I'd say it's more of a rough draft right now. And uh, we're trying to get it in the total group of everything. Uh, the guys kind of have a mental checklist. They go through that flow chart. Uh, we're hoping to get it prettier looking and out of my handwriting and then it should be everywhere around the shop. All right, you want to see the dark room and how the whole build is set up? So basically, uh, this was one big room and we split it into quadrants. And then Marcotte was saying it needed to be a horseshoe, right, in a perfect flow. So we split the room in four parts so that everything travels back out that way to production. Got it. So screens get reclaimed here. Jump into that quadrant. It dries, and then once they're dry the next day, I come in here and somewhat sort screens, dry screens that are ready to coat. And then from here, they get coated and then they go into our dark room, which is over here. Dark, 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 dark. Are these all your mesh count stickers? Yeah. Got it, and then dries, you got the dehumidifier. Yeah, got the dehumidifier, got racks. We got more racks coming, more screens coming. That's the Unicode 4000 right there. <laughs> it's uh, self coder, manual self code. <laughs> After racks have set, then we bring them through, check artwork on Frontavo, and then grab our screens that we need for the job. And here's where we line them up. And then from there, we burn over here. We got a new exposure unit coming. From there, we walk out. Like our washout booth after they get dipped, we spray out and check for pinholes and make sure everything's washed up. Do you guys label this thing? So do you put it by the job? Yeah, so then what he'll start to do is he'll get every guy ready. Eventually, we just got those baking racks where every press will have their own rack. But for now, he basically lines them. He'll, he'll go give it to the guys and say, 
here's your next five jobs, and then they'll take it from there, right? Do you tape them up yourself, or do you let them? Depends on time. If we have time on production, I want them to tape, but then if it's to keep the ball rolling, then I'll go ahead and I'll, you know, tape right. for them. Yeah. So. Dalton needs to be, like he said, at two places at once. We kind of gave him like a little desk right here. He's in the dark room. He's over there. So he's kind of doing the Cupid Shuffle all the time. This thing's fucking awesome. Clean. That's the squeegee cleaner. That's awesome. Literally just put the squeegee in. Turn, 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 turn. Now, every Monday we have a meeting at 4.30 with the team. We all just have like a checklist of what we went over, what our action items are for the week. And there was a focus this week to check your neighbor or check up on someone else. I have to check the credit card statements. <laughs> Uh, but different things like Matt's going to take an extra step to check pricing, you know, Milo's going to make sure emails are tagged correctly, Dalton's going to check ink color placement this week and make sure we're doubling down on that. So, so you do this weekly? Weekly, every Monday at 4.30, yep. So if I have stuff that I'm sitting on for a long time, like we printed this order, it doesn't ship for a couple of weeks, we'll just put it in there. Um, you know, this is a big order in here that's been sitting here for a couple of weeks, so that's in there. Those are jobs that are going to be lined up. Um, so this is just like storage, um, but really what this is used for when we're busy is bagging and tagging. So when the school year starts, there's basically rows of tables. Our bagging and tagging team will lay everything out, bag it, put it on there, and then Matt will ship it out or deliver it or whatever. So, um, so yeah, basically it's just like lined with these tables. And then I'm like pretty anal about packaging. So... Uh, individual shirts are put in these frosted bags um, with a stuffer that goes in them um, and the packing slip on this side so that when they get a campus ink box all of them are really nice and neat everyone's names are on top of it um, so feel to it yeah so like I have all different sizes of bags I've got big ones actually I can use this for my cables what so I can use this for my charging cables. yeah I have like a mid-size one if there's a couple pieces um, yeah and I just order these you know, six months in advance from overseas and we just keep them here. Um, but basically this is all the stuff that we use for bagging and tagging. Oh, and you grabbed a bunch of custom boxes like you're showing over there. Yeah, so our brand is pretty important to us. So it's really critical that everything looks really, really nice when it leaves the shop. Um, so we have branded boxes, branded bags. So we have stuffers that go into every bag that say thank you for ordering with us. Um, basically you have like one opportunity to create a personal experience. So with bagging and tagging, you auto market um, every time you're doing it. This is the table that came from the lab. We built this. So this is going to go into our new retail location. Um, when is that re new retail location open? I'm going to pick up the keys today. Oh, and we got four well, weeks to it. get it ready. I have to go finish signing the lease. That's cool. You tried the ink on there like that? So basically, Tom and Jed uh, have obviously been printing their entire lives. And so we took old film um, from some of their old artwork had to do with the University of Illinois. And then we took the screens that they printed the Final Four on. Um, when U of I went to the Final Four, they printed like 35,000 shirts in five or six days. So we reburned that film. We kind of froze ink on there, put it through the dryer. And then we built the table, um, just like a workstation. We used old screens down there. Um, so kind of DIY, but like pretty dope table. So we will be moving this into our new space. Creative, okay. Yeah. But yeah, bagging and tagging goes on in here. That's a new side project that Jed's working on right now. Um, but yeah, so, and then, you know, if we ever had important stuff in here, we could lock it up. We don't really do that, but, uh, you know, this is kind of the finishing area when it comes to packaging. So, that's it.